Good morning, everybody, and welcome to welcome to this concise webinar. Uh, this webinar is on email marketing, and I'm very pleased to say that I'm being uh, joined today by Paul Murphy. Paul is uh, with Concise Digital. Paul is a digital marketing coordinator, and one of the things that Paul specialises in within Concise is email marketing. And uh, so I've invited Paul to uh, to join us today to help. Uh, to in fact to present this session um gareth you'll be you'll be pleased to know he's having a little vacation right now and i think right now he's up in Karagini national park up in just near broome or that up that way having a fabulous time no, so th th yeah that's nice so welcome paul thank you uh richard and uh thank you everybody that's joined the webinar um yeah. this is uh really a webinar that's just going to take us through some steps of um, email marketing, uh, going to look at some sequences, some pros and cons uh, of, uh, you know, what to do, what not to do, what software is good, uh, you know, for each different industry. Yeah, thanks, uh, Paul. Yeah. So for those people who haven't been to one of our concise webinars before, welcome. We do try to keep these concise. We try to keep them uh, focused in on business information you can use. Um, these webinars are being, or this webinar is being recorded and we're very happy to take questions as we go through which you can put into the chat uh, there is also hopefully going to be some time for live q a at the end uh, so that is good um, the, the webinar recordings are upon youtube and on our concise uh, website so if you do find that you need to interrupt yourself during this webinar then you are able to watch the recording later and it'll be up probably within about 24 hours. So there we go. So with all of that, I'm now going to hand over to Paul and uh, over to you, Paul, and help us get better results with email marketing. Okay, thanks, Richard. Um, I'll just quickly go through these seven points that we're going to cover. So uh, for number one, we're going to cover the types of emails that work best and when to use them. Uh, how to improve your open rates, click rates and conversion rates. Number three, key things you must get right for successful email campaigns and four, the pros and cons of some popular email systems, uh, platforms, etc. Uh, five is create powerful emails based on customer behavior and customer value. Six, why and when automation can be good or bad. Uh, seven, the trend to mobile is now more popular. So uh, the first uh, slide we have here, um, I'm going to start with an email sequence. And this one's interesting because when you have a new customer come through, it's the best time to start um, building your email sequence, uh, building customer relationships um, and um, getting a return on investment by building email sequences. So we start with um, the welcome email and it's really the beginning of the customer relationship for customers. Um, moving on to this slide uh, and the continuation. So welcome emails are the most, uh, have the highest open rates. So at 82.21%, that's really high and it's the best time to start building the relationship with your customer uh, because more, they're more likely to read this email than and most than any of them so it, you have to provide a hub of information um, so provide information on what your company is about uh, why you started even um, and um, make the uh, email friendly and welcoming and personalized and it's an opportunity to um, provide information about customer service or you may have a certain particular way of doing business that, uh, with your customers and you can provide information about that. And it's also uh, an opportunity to maybe provide a special offer coupon where they can come back at a later time and, and purchase uh, something from you or, or call you for a, uh, an offer that you provided them. Um, and it just builds uh, better customer relationships. And um, better return on investment for your email marketing in the long term. I'll just uh, click on this next slide. So uh, the next email in this um, email sequence after the welcome email, you can send your customers uh, loyalty emails or uh, customer retention emails. And um, really what you want to um, come across to your customers with is um, something about when they made their first purchase, you could say to them, well, you know, um, how do you like that product? What do you think? Can you give us some feedback? Is this something that 
um, you want to talk about or is there something that you um, wanted to ask? So how do they like the product? Um, would, you, would they be um, happy to write a review or a testimonial? Um, so a lot of people uh, will offer up testimonials. Um, I think there's about eight to ten percent of people um, write testimonials. So um, if you send a, a testimonial email out to them, um, the customer loyalty emails uh, help increase customer growth. And um, you know, loyal customers build positive brand reputation for the business. They're more likely to share um, your company uh, and recommend or refer your company with friends and family. So building loyalty is very important. And uh, that's one part of an email sequence that you can um, introduce into your email marketing. So the next um, email in the sequence that you could also include is a retail sales promotion email. Um, this is mainly for e-commerce. Um, I know there's a lot of service industries out there which uh, can do something similar. So you need to have a look at your industry and uh, what your offer is and what your company sort of offers. And you can also, you can always, um, you know, transform any email marketing template into either a service industry based um, sales promotion or a product industry based sales promotion. So it's an opportunity for uh, retail companies to promote stock clearance sales, for example. Um, it's also an opportunity to upsell to other products, uh, upsell other products. Um, and, um, you can also, you know, provide uh, indoor traffic. So traffic into your bricks and mortar store by um, asking people, you know, come in. Uh, a lot of people research first um, online and then they come into the store. So, um, you know, it's just an opportunity to um, get more people into the store and upsell to them when they're in the store as well. Uh, and it's also an opportunity to have uh, share with friends links on there, um, share to Facebook, share, share on social media. So that's just another strategy that you can use to uh, get uh, more customers. So this one's another one in the email sequence that uh, you could include is the anniversary email. Um, you could send one either six months or 12 months uh, to a new customer after they've purchased a product. So for example, if they purchased a ring uh, or they purchase some jewelry, um, you could uh, send them another relevant anniversary uh, email to them at a certain date. Um, you know, for example, you could uh, also, if somebody had a, a, a tire company or, a, a, you know, somebody bought a mag wheel, you could send them um, an anniversary email, which could be, you know, in six months or 12 months time about tires that suited that mag wheel. So there's lots of different um, options and lots of different ideas that you can you can include. Um, you can have seasons greetings, of course, uh, birthday gift offers. Uh, you can segment uh, people into a birthday uh, list, um, and look, it helps build customer retention and and brand loyalty. So uh, you can always um, provide an offer in the um, in the email. Uh, anniversary email that uh, also people appreciate and they can use that uh, any time or you can put a um, you can put a time limit on the on the offer as well so that they have to buy within a certain time and that helps uh, increase sales so it's always important to to remind your customers that you're thinking of them and you remember them as well it's always important to especially in today's age where a lot of people are now shopping online it's hard to build customer relationships um, so you know, having email marketing and approaching uh, people with messages that, uh, yeah, we're thinking of you and here's a special offer or um, some sort of a discount perhaps um, helps build customer uh, loyalty. So one of the other uh, popular emails is the abandoned cart email. So if you have an e-commerce store, uh, it's recommended, highly recommended that you have abandoned cart email sequence happening because, um, on average, 70% um, of people uh, abandon the shopping cart because a lot of people are looking at shipping costs and they might get sidetracked or they might um, think I'll buy that next week or next month. So uh, if you send out a series of abandoned uh, cart emails, um, the recovery rate is between 3 and 11%. So really, I mean, like um, for a lot of e-commerce business, that could probably um, 
go a long way towards paying for all your email marketing, um, the subscription costs and the email costs because it's a, it's a great recovery rate. Yeah, just on that, sometimes sometimes um, e-commerce businesses can double their sales by the use of a um, an abandoned cart email, like a, a cleverly worded and appropriately worded abandoned cart email. Like for example, if you're making three percent conversions and you are able to send three uh, percent conversions or uh, normally in e-commerce, and you are able to get um, let's say twenty five percent conversions out of it or sorry 11 percent conversions out of uh, the abandoned cart emails then you can dramatically increase your sales and profitability so it's a it's a major point to consider and exactly. uh, as as paul's got there the, the abandoned cart recovery rate typically can be between three and eleven percent uh, we have people who who are getting twenty percent uh, conversions out of the abandoned cart emails that they send to follow up um, to people who have abandoned the cart processes. Anyway, Paul, carry on. That's a that's a really important one, though. Yeah. Yeah, great. Thanks, Richard. Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, that's the uh, the completion of the uh, email sequence. But you can build a sequence. Uh, it's you know it's just your imagination, uh, up to your imagination how far you want to take it. You can extend them uh, with a lot of email commerce um, technology, and uh, you know uh, it's up to the different company and what the different products and services are on offer is going to depend on what sort of sequences are going to be implemented. Um, so we're moving on to uh, the next subject on how to improve your open rates, click rates and conversion rates. So the most important thing is to know who your ideal customers are and building customer personas is really important because uh, you need to have maybe five personas um, because not every customer is going to be the same you know you might have some uh, customers that are um, females that um, you know uh, in the age group of 25 to 45 they might be buying a certain product because they might be buying clothing but some females in between the age of 45 to 65 might buy something different so um, knowing who your customers are your ideal customers and building personas so that you can write content for those those um, specific personas um, is the best way to um, write messages and uh, write relevant content that your audience want to read. Yeah, just so, just on that, just to explain, in case you're not sure what a persona is, a persona is a written description of that of the of that particular customer of a of a typical customer in that particular customer segment. And the more that you can personalize the persona, you may call the person by a name, you can describe what their interests are, what they're looking for, what their intentions are when they come onto your website, what they like, what they don't like. And the more that you can describe that and get very clear about that person as being an example and a typical example of the person within that customer segment, the more that you can do that and the clearer you are with it, the more that you can make sure that you're writing to that person. And if you're a, a writing the email to that person and the more that you can personalize that to the persona that is representative of the segment, then the more that you can focus in on those results. And when you then start targeting emails to that particular segment and you target a different email to another particular segment, then you can start really getting getting results. Yeah, exactly. Which, which leads into Paul's next point about relevant content. Exactly. Um, we'll go to the next slide because that continues on from uh, what um, which is just mentioned there. Um, so, uh, Improving your open rates, click rates, and conversion rates continued. Uh, so the importance of the relevant content is also includes um, saving money because, um, you know, you don't want to write content that's not providing a solution to a problem for your personas or your customers out there. So, you know, if you're not writing relevant content, people are going to be, you're going to be sending uh, emails to the wrong audience because you don't understand the audience. So understanding the audience is all about reducing uh, sending unwanted emails that are just going to bounce or they're going to get unsubscribed and they're going to cost you extra money. So uh, it's important to have your content um, really specific. Uh, so, um, you know, minimising unwanted emails also increases your conversion rate because you're not targeting people that aren't interested and that reduces your conversion rate and it reduces your 
um, return on investment because you want an, the highest conversion rate you can possibly get. And it's also important to reduce your unsubscribe rates because you need to um, verify or authorize your domain with a lot of email marketing software, nearly all of them. And this process is all about registering your domain so that it doesn't bounce or it doesn't go into spam folders and it's it's, it's uh, an authorized or verified domain that's classified as safe. So um, if you have too many bounces and unsubscribes, you actually start to get a bad reputation with your domain and they'll start going into the spam folders too much. So that's just another reason why you don't want to be targeting people that um, are not you know, part of your target audience and getting your content right is critical. So moving on to the next subject, the key things you must get right for successful email campaigns. Getting back to the content, the subject line in the inbox is the most important heading. It's got to entice and pique people's interest because um, if it doesn't, it's just going to get deleted um, or more likely to get deleted. So, it, you know, having a great subject line increases your open rates. And once people open the email, the next important factor of the content is the heading. So the heading needs to inspire the reader to move down through the email content, the body of the content, the image has to be relevant and grab their attention as well. And, you know, the, the call to action, um, you know, throughout the email, maybe down the bottom of the template, that's, um, you know, the end result of people reading through, finding something that they like, finding a problem, that, uh, a solution to their problem or a product that they like. They click on the call to action and then we've gone to the landing page. So the landing page, that has to be relevant to the offer, the email, they all have to be in synchronization. So when people go to the landing page, let's go to the next slide here. The landing page has to be 100% um, re relevant to the offer that you originally um, provided in your email template and your subject heading and your call to action. So if it's not um, relevant, and I see this happen a bit actually, where people, um, they just send the person to a, a generic landing page and the conversions drop because the, the reader doesn't fully understand what's happened after that. They get a bit confused, they can drop off. So you need to have um, good conversion rate optimization tactics on the landing page so that you maximize your return on investment. So a great web form or, you know, buttons with call to actions, uh, directing people and giving people roadmaps about where to go on the page and, and what's the next step. So, um, you know, one of the most important key factors is conversion optimization and Throughout, even throughout your whole website, you need to have conversion optimization rate tactics so that you're helping people navigate through the page and um, you're increasing your conversion optimization strategy. Now to the next point, the pros and cons of some popular email systems. So I've broken this up into two industries, really, the service industry and yeah, selling products online because they're pretty pretty much two different strategies with content and the way you do your email marketing. So with the service industries, for example, like say if you're a um, a physiotherapist or you're an electrician or you know you're servicing the community and and you're offering information as a service or something like that, uh, an accountant firm. Um, you know, a software like Mailchimp's probably all you need. Um, uh, because what it is, you're, you're just offering content, you're content marketing to people. So you don't really need um, high-end um, strategy, uh, not strategy, a high-end sort of technical um, expertise with MailChimp or when you're doing content marketing. Um, it's just really a small, smaller type of um, technology that, um, you know, you're just sending uh, information like newsletters or um, some helpful information to your customers. Um, the good thing about uh, MailChimp is that it integrates with Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. So if you are sending content out to your customers, you can send a synchronized campaign uh, with, through your email marketing. So you send the email marketing template and then it integrates with Facebook so that email marketing 
um, message goes into Facebook, into Instagram, and into Twitter at the same time. So you're opening up new channels, and um, these people can come back to you through those channels. So it's important to uh, have Facebook and Instagram inter integrations and Twitter. Um, the other good thing about uh, MailChimp, it's uh, it's uh, it does have once you get set up, it does have a good do-it-yourself email template builder. Um, so if you want to send small messages, like if you're a bricks and mortar and you've moved moved premises, you can just quickly send a um, a template email that only takes like 20 minutes, half an hour to set up, and you can send that out to your whole database with just a small message that we have moved. Um, you know, simple examples like that. <laughs> Um, they've got a good template library, MailChimp, so there's a lot of templates to choose from. The only thing I, I don't like about MailChimp is the segmentation is fairly a manual process. So, you know, you have to tag a lot of um, customers with and tag them into different segments, and that can get a little bit laborious. If you've got an e-commerce store and you're selling hundreds or thousands of products on a monthly basis, you don't want to be tagging people manually because that can become really uh, a lot of hard work and very time consuming. Um, I find MailChimp can be a bit nav difficult to navigate uh, when you first start using it. There is a bit of a learning curve, but once you've learnt it, um, it's quite easy and um, it's quite worthwhile for service industries to uh, have something like MailChimp. So the second part of um, the pros and cons of popular email systems is um, I'm focusing more on e-commerce sites here because um, if you've got an e-commerce site, you really need a dedicated uh, email marketing software because you're getting so many, um, you're selling so many products that you really need to um, have a fair bit of automation. So, and one of the automations that's really important is dynamic product display blocks, which if, for example, I showed you the um, the uh, abandoned cart email. Um, now, if you send an abandoned cart email to somebody and they've got a a dynamic product display block in there, uh, well, they can you can show them the product that they that they were looking at, then they left in the cart, and you can also show them related products. If they don't like that product, you can push other products to them to say, well, um, you know, you might like this instead, um, and you can change your purchase. Now, um, a lot of the email commerce, um, dedicated email commerce platforms um, have got automated triggers and flows. So it's very easy to create segmentations um, with triggers. So if somebody uh, purchases a product, they can a trigger can be activated and then they can go into another segment um, or they can be sent another email um, later on down the track, which you can schedule for another time. And flows as part of the flow of the, the triggers and the segmentation. So having that is really important for automation. Um, it just frees up a lot of time for the business owner and uh, it makes everything um, a lot easier to use. The, uh, the dedicated e-commerce software is more expensive, uh, but if you set it up properly and you work it you work on your return on investment and you build a strategy on you know how you're going to build your email campaign and your segments and your flows and your triggers then the return on investment can be much higher than you know using something like mailchimp so it really you know, a lot of planning has to be put uh, in place to uh, make it all work properly the other um, thing about um, a lot of these uh, e-commerce platforms is that once you get to know how to use it, it can become really easy to use. And if you have an email sequence like I showed earlier, uh, and then you know, you've got that going automatically and all of a sudden you do another email sequence, well, you can have a lot of emails that start to overlap and you might start sending people um, the same or, or similar emails uh, in the same week. And you, you may not want to do that because some people, well, a lot of people don't like getting too many emails. So you need to be careful you're not going to send too many emails out. But that's a good uh, example of how easy it is to use in the long run. Uh, so the next um, topic is uh, how to create more powerful emails based on customer behavior and customer value. So um, 
what we need to do with uh, our email marketing is, you know, segmentation is really important. And it's all about targeting the right audience. So once you've, you've got your email marketing in place, you need to think about building segments. So just an example of one segment or one, yeah, one uh, list. Uh, they're either lists or segments. You can, you can call them what you like. But um, a VIP segment is really important for people that uh, are your best customers. So your top 20%, you might sort of want to reward them in a different way to other customers. So you can, you can segment those customers and provide them with offers or specials because they're going to be your most loyal customers and they're more likely to uh, refer them to friends and family, to refer your company to friends and family. So having a VIP segment is important. Uh, you can have another segment, for example. So somebody that purchased item A could be interested in item B, like the example I said before, if somebody bought a mag wheel, um, they might be interested in buying a certain type of tire. So you can, um, you know, put these people that have bought the mag wheel into a segment and market to them further on down the track. Uh, the other, another segment is, uh, you know, send a personalized message or personalized offer. So birthdays is a good example, or um, like a jewelry shop, uh, like I mentioned before, that's a good example of somebody that, you know, somebody's made a purchase and you can say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send them a, an offer in 12 months. Um, or yeah, look, tell us what your birthday is and uh, we'll send you a gift or a, a complimentary um, gift of, or an offer of some sort. So all these things build loyalty and, and um, help build the, the brand and um, customer retention. So this, this one, this topic's how to build, create more powerful emails based on customer behavior and customer value. Um, this topic is uh, machine learning, which is fairly new. It's probably, it's been out for a couple of years. Um, but it's only going to get more refined machine learning. And some of the things that you can use with the algorithms um, is uh, you can predict next purchase dates. So you can send, um, you know, a similar or related product to a person that um, the algorithms thinks that this person has a history of buying and they, they're always buying at this time on this date. So you could probably send them an email to uh, this customer or this segment of customers and um, the likelihood of them purchasing uh, is higher. Um, you can also um, use the data to uh, find out who will buy when and when, which is similar to what I just spoke about. But um, yeah, reaching them at the most opportune time um, using machine learning, you can predict the total amount of customer future spending. So, um, you know, you could segment these people that uh, you find that are, you know, spending a lot more money than others into your VIP um, folder, and then um, you can send them offers and invite them to a VIP club or some sort of a membership. Uh, and you can also find out who your big spenders are. So that's similar to, you know, that's another option for a VIP um, segmentation. And you can also use machine learning uh, because you, with features to upsell. So, you know, with machine learning, it categorizes everybody into a certain um, sort of segment and you can see what products they've bought, when they've bought them, if they're male or female, and then you can sort of uh, cater your marketing or your email marketing to those, those audiences. Okay, so the next subject, why and when automation can be a good or bad. So I'm, I've, I've looked at the pros and the next tile, uh, next slides on um, the cons. So the pros of course is generating sales. So um, email marketing is still the highest uh, converter for all digital marketing channels. Um, so um, automation, um, it increases engagement um, because you're, you're you're more you're targeting on a more granular basis, and you're sending people um, content that's really related to them. And you know, if you're building uh, relationships and encouraging new relationships, you know, you're building loyalty, and 
loyal customers uh, spread the message. Um, they're more likely to share your company. They're more likely to um, refer you to their friends and family. Uh, so automation, one of the one of the beauties of automation that a lot of business owners um, are looking for is you know saving time because it's automated. Um, it's not set and forget. Um, you always have to be monitoring your customer service levels, the messages, um, what people are saying, and uh, you know even on social media. So uh, if people are um, responding to you in a negative way, it's not a set and forget system. You have to um, be conscious that you know you need to monitor um, how it's going, uh, bounce rates, open rates, that sort of thing. But it does save you a lot more time because you're not doing anything manually anymore. Uh, so, um, you know, automation is getting more sophisticated. Segmentation uh, is better. Personalization is better. And the integration now with email marketing and all, a lot of these uh, the e commerce software and, and even MailChimp, it's uh, integrating with um, messaging apps uh, and social media. So, you're opening up not just email marketing, you're opening up to a lot of other channels like social media um, and um, chatbots. Uh, there's different ways you can automate um, all of your marketing. And, and it's not just through email marketing too. There's a lot of different automations that you can, you can add to uh, automating your social media and your messaging apps as well. So um, it's, all, it's all becoming a lot more automated. And there's a lot of software companies now thinking about automating. So uh, the last uh, slide here, um, it's important to remember, oops, where's that going? Paul, you, yeah. you, 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 wanna, you missed the, the uh, cons slide. Did I? Okay. Yeah. Oh, did you just put it on there, didn't you? Oh, sorry. Yeah, there you go. Okay, okay, so the cons, right. Yeah, so email marketing, um, the dedicated email marketing platforms uh, for e-commerce, they cost a bit more money because the, there's uh, high implementation costs. So it takes longer to implement um, all the segmentation, the flows, the triggers. Um, but once you do have it all set up, it's actually uh, more cost effective because the return on investment's higher. So, I mean, I, that, that's just the entry level um, cost for the implementation once it's all implemented um, a lot of people find it easier to use than the older style of email marketing platforms um, so that one of the uh, cons of this type of email marketing uh, the automation uh, it's so easy that um, you can send too many email messages like i said in the previous uh, email uh, previous slide so over messaging has become a problem and you need to be careful you're not sending too many messages to your customers um, because if you if you are sending too many messages uh, it can depersonalize the brand so there's a risk of um, people dropping off because you you're not really connecting with them so your brand um, is affected if you're not managing it properly Yeah, so we're moving on to mobile, the importance of, uh, you know, the trend to mobile is now really popular. So um, on one of our clients um, has 80% mobile traffic and 20% desktop. So um, a lot of their customers are, you know, they like their mobile phones <laughs> and they do most of their shopping and, and all their interaction on the mobile phone. Um, so you know, one of the things about mobile phones now is it's really easy for people to make a purchase on a mobile phone. Um, you know, if you, if you want to go and buy a jacket from a store and, you know, you've got zip pay, all you need to do is bring up a, a barcode on your mobile phone um, and you can even go in and show them the product on your mobile phone that you, you're looking at, you're researching at home, show them the product, um, go to zip pay, get the barcode out, it's all done over the phone and, you um, you know, it's such a seamless way for people to purchase now. So all the buy now, pay later apps have made it easier for um, people to purchase uh, products online, um, pay online uh, with the mobile. And, uh, you know, it's just a seamless link. 
all products and uh, easy payment options uh, can be done in minutes and uh, away you go. So it's really going to grow because there's more um, pay as you go or pay now by later apps coming onto the market. And just uh, the bottom point about your email templates, when you're designing um, content and templates, um, you need to design them for both desktop, mobile and for uh, tablets because uh, if you just do it on desktop, it might look great on desktop, but when you have a look at it on your mobile phone, it looks terrible. Um, you need to take into consideration the font size, um, the images, are they going to work on the mobile? Um, just, yeah, just the layout, you know, is it going to be um, portrait, landscape? So you need to be careful um, how you design your your templates. And that's it, uh, everybody. Okay. We've gone through a lot of information there. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot there. We've got some questions that have come through, Paul. Uh, yep. And now we, we probably have overshot our time limit a little bit as well. So hopefully uh, that's, that's okay. Um, yep. So one of the questions is about uh, marketing Kindle books via Amazon. And the uh, writer, uh, Kim, says, I understand that Amazon keeps customer data for its own use and doesn't allow the seller to access customer data. Is there any way around this obstacle? Um, Personally, what do, what do you think, Paul? I personally don't have a lot of experience with Amazon. Uh, I know that's something that another guy within our organisation, John, actually ha has more. Um, what do you think? Um, I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think you've got any chance of getting anything out of Amazon in that regard. Lucky yeah. to, for them to return an email, really. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't think there's any chance that you could access any data from them. Yeah, so... Um, the it's a bit a bit similar to eBay in a way where the relationship, the platform likes to manage the relationship and doesn't actually want people to be dealing directly outside of it. And so, no. uh, yeah, it's uh, the one, one of the things that you can try to do is to encourage the uh, customers to send you a review or to come onto your website or to do something that interacts directly with you uh, not not through Amazon, but then you also risk the wrath of the platform. In this case, Amazon. So it's yep. a it's a that's an interesting question, Kim, and we'd love to help you with that. In a uh, but probably a, a needs a bit of specialist information. Well, Another question is, uh, Paul, uh, where is machine learning accessible? Is it an app for your website? Uh, it's not an app for your website, but it, but apps apps uh, with machine learning can be connected into your website and some email software has that capability for machine learning simple simpler systems like mailchimp for example uh, as far as i know has hasn't got uh, machine learning capability has it has it paul in your no no whereas really, something no. yeah so which which of the email platforms would you consider do have that at the moment Oh, Clavio, the, the major, uh, the bigger e-commerce platforms, Clavio, uh, Campaign Monitor, Active Campaign, all the ones right. that are basically um, integrated to an e-commerce store like Shopify or Big Commerce or WooCommerce. Yeah. Um, they're pulling data from the actual um, customer behaviour on the website. Yeah. So as a so result of that. Fully integrated. Yeah. So. Yeah, as a result of that, then the mm. system can start to learn based on what mm. has happened previously. Yeah. yeah, and the more customers okay. and the more the more people navigate and buy on your site, the more the uh, yeah machine learning uh, can collect data and, and target um, your ideal customer. Good. Yeah. Okay. Are there, if there are any other questions, please feel free to ask us uh, directly after the after the session. Uh, or, or now, if you would like. Um, I'll just quickly mention the next webinar that's coming up in two weeks' time, and that is about planning a new website. And some very, uh, well, I like to think important uh, tips to help turn vision into reality uh, without drama. And that's the session that's coming up in two weeks' time, October the 11th. Uh, so thanks very much peop, uh, for, for coming along to this session. Um, if you want any more help or info, then please give us a call. And um, 
Thanks very much, Paul. That was a lot to yeah. go through. You uh, do, did a good job. Thank you very much for that. Do you have anything you want to say and wrap up? Uh, look, uh, just thanks, everybody, for um, uh, staying through the duration. Uh, yeah, it ended up a bit longer than what I expected, but uh, no, I so hope people found uh, the information useful. Yeah, and so if you would like to follow anything up, please uh, please get in touch. But um, hopefully that's been of a lot of help. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a great day and uh, all the best. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Cool. Bye. Bye-bye.